Let's find the mean, median, mode, and range for the following data sets. Each of these data sets are already written in increasing order, so we can jump right in to finding all of our pieces. To find the mean, I'm going to add the items in the data set together. So that's going to be 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6. And I'm going to divide by the total number of items in the set, which is 5. If I perform the sum in the numerator, I get 18 over 5. And divide on my calculator, I get a mean of 3.6. The median, remember, is the number that's exactly in the middle of the data set. Because I have five elements of the data set, I can divide it around the median value exactly in the middle. The median is 3. The mode in this case, the number that's repeated most often, is 2. And the range is going to be 6 minus 2, or 4. Now let's look at the second data set, because the only difference between the first set and the second is the last value. So instead of it equaling 6, it equals 20. So to find, again, the mean, I'm going to add together all the items in my data set and then divide by the number of them. So in this case I get 32 divided by 5 which is 6.4. Notice the large difference between the mean for this set and the mean for this set. Let's see if the other measures of central tendency are impacted by that 20. The median is going to be the same as in my first data set the mode is going to be the same, also 2. The range is going to be quite different. I'm looking now at 20 minus 2 equals 18. So this example introduces an important concept, and that is the concept of outliers. This 20 is an outlier for the given data set because it lies well beyond the other values. This example also shows that the measures of central tendency can have very different results and you need to pay attention to your data set to see which measure actually provides the best indicator of the central value. In this case I would not choose the mean, I would probably choose the median, whereas in this case I would probably choose the mean.